Okay, we've got the, the go ahead that the, uh, the meeting is now live. So welcome to this meeting of the Licensing Subcommittee. My name is Martin Newton from Democratic Services and the subcommittee today is made up of councillors Archer, George and Sweeney. The first item of business is the appointment of a chair for the meeting. May our subcommittee members to nominate a chair for this meeting. Can we nominate councillor Sweeney, please? Uh, and is that seconded and agreed? Yeah, agreed. Thank you, Councillor Sweeney's in the chair. Okay, um, thank you, Martin, and thank you, Councillor. So, um, good morning, everyone, um, to um, one of our licensing cup subcommittees. Um, as you know, we we uh, normally have these in a in a room uh, in Guildhall. We can all see each other face to face, but in the current climate, we're we're broadcasting this um, on a, on the council's YouTube channel. Um, and the, the recording will be available shortly after the meeting. Um, there is a published agenda which is available on the council website um, following the links to your council, democracy and elections, um, and you can find uh, then decision making committees. Um, we need three councillors um, to form a quorum for this meeting, um, and all of us will need to be present uh, at all times during the meeting to ensure we make a decision on the licensing application. Should a subcommittee member or a legal advisor lose connection during the hearing, we're going to pause to allow them to rejoin as soon as possible. Um, so to help to reduce feedback, I can ask everyone joining by video to mute their microphone when they are not speaking um, and it's controlled. Yep, Chairman, you're just on mute at the moment. We're going to um, hear from different members of the subcommittee at the moment, um, and going to uh, um, we're going to ask questions. Um, and members can also, if they wish to speak, can they indicate um, that they wish to speak by using the chat function? Um, don't use the chat function um, to ask questions of officers or councillors. And remember that all meeting participants on the video call are able to see what has been entered in the chat. Um, could also ask everyone to ensure your mobile phones are switched off or in silent mode during this this meeting. Um, so I will now introduce the participants um, in the meeting. Uh, so if um, when I say your name, just say good morning or words to that effect. Uh, so we have Councillor Archer. Good morning. Uh, Councillor George. Good morning. Okay, we have Guy Bishop, the legal advisor. That must be. Yes. Yep, I think that, that will do. Becky Welton, the licensing officer. Hello, Good everybody. Morning. morning. Okay. Um, and we have an applicant, Katerina Zega. Good morning. I've also got Simon and also my mother, Pramira Zego, is the license holder here as well with us today. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a resident, Kelly Dixon. Good morning. And we have a resident, Halter Data. Is that right? Yes, right. Good morning. Okay. Um, so um, we have a set agenda, which I will just go through. Um, item two now is, does any member of the subcommittee have a personal or pecuniary interest to clear? Um, Councillor Archer or Councillor George, do you have anything to declare no i no. don't no uh and i i have no personal or pecuniary interest to declare either um we had me minutes of the subcommittee meetings on the 21st and 26th of may have been circulated are there any objections to approving those minutes are correct no objection no objection Great. thank you thank you um so I will sign those minutes at the convenient moment. Um, so there is a procedure for this. So we, these are set out on, um, you know, the, the, the agenda um, that's been circulated. Uh, and paragraph 55 deals with notifications of the decision. Um, I will confirm that during the period that these hearings are held remotely, 
the decision will be confirmed by email to avoid participants having to wait online whilst the subcommittee reaches decisions. Um, normally, you would be um, asked to wait outside the room and then we'd call you back in and tell you um, our decision and the reasons. Um, but I think this way is, is a bit more efficient use of, of, of time. Um, so is everybody happy with proceeding on the basis of, of the procedures? OK, good. Um, so we're going to be looking at Niku Bar and Restaurant, 90 to 92 Yule Road, Surbiton, KT6, 6EX today. Um, I now call on Becky Welton, the licensing officer, to introduce the report on the application. Over to you, Becky. Thank you, Chair. This application relates to Niku Bar and Restaurant at 90 to 92 Yule Road, Surbiton. The application for a new premises license was made on the 20th of May by VNZ Garden Limited. The application seeks a premises license to permit the following licensable activities. The sale by retail of alcohol for consumption on the premises, Sunday to Thursday from midday till midnight, Friday and Saturday from midday until half past midnight. Late night refreshment, Monday to Thursday from 11 p.m. until midnight, Friday and Saturday from 11 p.m. until 1 a.m. and on Sundays until midnight 30. The provision of live music, Monday to Thursday from 6 p.m. to midnight, Friday and Saturday from 6 p.m. to half past midnight and Sunday until 11 p.m. Provision of recorded music, Monday to Friday from 6 p.m. until midnight and Saturday and Sunday until midnight 30. The full application is attached for you at Annex 1 and the proposed hours of operation are laid out at Annex 2. The premises does already benefit from a premises license. However, a new application has been submitted to reflect the addition of an external area for licensable activities following the conversion of the rear car park into an additional outdoor trade area. I can confirm the applicant has advertised the application by way of public notice and in a local newspaper. And we have also made the application available on the council's website. All responsible authorities received a copy of the application. Um, I understand that the Metropolitan Police Licence Officer and the Council's Environmental Health Officer met with the applica applicant before the application was made and agreed conditions which are contained at Annex 3 of the report. Um, so no representations were received from responsible authorities. 430 residents were consulted and informed that an application had been received and six valid representations were received from other persons. Five against the application and one in support. The representations make reference that, to matters relating to the prevention of crime and disorder and the prevention of public nuisance licensing objectives and copies of those representations are attached to Annex 4 to your report. To assist you in making your decision, you have a map showing the approximate location of the premises at Annex 5 with some photographs of the external of the premises at Annex 6. In considering the report, the subcommittee is required to take into account the Secretary of State's guidance issued under Section 182 of the Licensing Act and the Council's licensing policy, along with the four licensing objectives. You are asked to determine the application, having regard to the representations received and any evidence heard at today's hearing, in accordance with the following options. To grant the application as requested. To grant the application subject to such conditions as the authority considers appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives. To exclude from the scope of a license any of the licensable activities sought or to reject the application. And I'm happy to take any questions if there are any, Chair. Thank you, Officer Welton. Um, Councillor Archer, do you have any questions for Becky? I don't have any questions for Becky at the moment. Thank you. OK, thank you. And Councillor George, do you have any questions for, for Becky? Not at the moment, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I now call on the applicant, uh, Katerina Zager, to give a summary of your application. There's no um, time limit on this, but um, I think uh, aim for five minutes um, if, if you can. Okay, thank you. Right, perfect, thank you. So first I'd like to introduce myself. So I've been managing Niku Bar and Restaurant from the last licensing committee that we've had. 
and the application that we have put in, it's a new premises application. It's the same conditions as we had before. So all the music, all the, all the live music, nothing has changed with that. We've been running the place with the same um, conditions we had before. The only additional is we're asking for an extension or an extra license for activity area for food and drink and also smoking as well. So currently, the current smoking area, we do have food and drink there as well. And we're just asking for alcohol in that area and also for the garden to be used up until 9 p.m. and then to be shut. And then the guests can come use the smoking area or inside as well. Yeah, no, so I think, um, so Simon Bale, um, just helping out with this, I'm a license holder as well. Um, so I was here at the last committee um, I think I remember meeting some of you. Um, it's really, I think, um, obviously the family have been running the place for the last um, uh, year almost, and they've been running, I think, responsibly the license. Um, I think they've engaged um, very proactively with the um, local community and also with neighbours. Um, they've demonstrated the fact that they can run the license with the license conditions attached in a responsible um, uh, way. Don't think um, that there have been any uh, issues in terms of complaints from either neighbors uh, for the, from the authorities or any, any other um, personal organization. Um, and I think all they're trying to do is to um, uh, extend the use of their garden up until nine o'clock, which I think is, um, uh, um, you know, a very, um, I guess not honourable, that's not, not the right word, but it's, it would be unusual for any pub garden to close at nine o'clock. And the fact that they've suggested nine, um, I think shows that their um, willingness to mitigate uh, any nuisance or noise um, or any other issues to their neighbours and local residents. Um, so I, I think it's a small change. Obviously, um, one has to apply completely from start. And I think um, a lot of the objections have been on um, actually what currently exists rather than what they're proposing. So um, I, I, I think it's it, it should be granted because I think, um, you know, I think it'll be a very good addition to uh, to the neighbourhood and I think they'll run, run it very responsibly. And also in light with the current situation as to what's actually happened is we have had um, Kingston Council come in the health and safety just to check all our tables, which we have at, have actually had to remove and get rid of loads of tables. So you can imagine that's only cut down on half of our covers. Now, most of our business and trade that we get is restaurant and bar as well. So we would need this additional seating to also seat people outside. Um, I, think the, I think the other point really to make that flows from that is, is that obviously with COVID-19 conditions, um, uh, the government and lots of local councils have um, suggested that uh, use of outside spaces should should be encouraged and um, I think uh, the rules and regulations for using these spaces actually have been relaxed in any case or are about to be relaxed so I, I just think this is a natural extension of uh, as, to, as to where everybody's going okay thank you do, do you have any yeah, I'm assuming you're you're referring to pave, pavement licenses under the business and planning bill um, yes, absolutely that, um, and, and just any use of external spaces to, to, to mitigate risk to, to customers, health risk. Thanks. Okay, um, thank you. Um, is there anything else you wish to add before I, I'll, I'll hand over the question from councillors? Um, I think the, the only thing really just to point out is I, I, I understand that um, they've had um, um, I think Rebecca's already mentioned it, but they've had um, noise checks, environmental health checks, um, and I think they've all passed. And they've all they've all satisfied all of those. So it's really just a highlight more than anything. Thank you. Um, so, Councillor Archer, do you have any questions for the applicant? Hi. Yes. So, um, garden use up to nine o'clock, and then after that, it would just be smokers going out, would it? Okay, Without so, alcohol. Uh, with our current condition that we have in place is you can have food and drink in the smoking area. Yeah. So when that would be shut off at 9 p.m., there'll be a gate there so that no one's allowed to go in that garden, but they can still use these additional smoking area that we have on this side. Okay. 
Great. And I understand there's residential property above you, is that correct? Uh, yes, there is, yeah. Yeah. So in terms of if you have a lot of people out there they're smoking, um, it, it, have there been issues in the past with kind of the residents above, if they have got a window open on a, on a summer's evening, there being a lot of, sort of smoke going up and a lot of noise. Have you had issues with that? Any um, no, no, we haven't. And also with that point is our restaurant is technically a family run restaurant as well. And most guests that you're coming in, they're going to be eating as well. Now, you can imagine if you're having Sunday roast, you're not just going to come in and smoke. For yeah. instance, if you're having a burger, you're, you're not going to have 20 people all smoking at once. Yeah. Because I don't know if you've seen the pictures of outside, but it's a really nice decking area. You're not going to have yeah. 10 people come in and smoke at once. Mm -hmm. And with the new conditions as well, how many can you actually sit out there as well? Yeah. Yeah. So it's table service out yes, in this area. Yeah. Okay. There's no there's no bar service outside. So there's mm -hmm. no I mean, there's no bar. So all, it's all table service. So they have to sit and we would come out there, take their order and bring it out to them. Thank you. That that one of one of the moment. conditions. Sorry, one of the conditions deals with um, waiter or waitress service mm -hmm. in the restaurant area. Is that yeah. does that include the outside area? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Do you mind just rephrasing the question? Yes, yeah, certainly. Sorry about that. Um, so the uh, condition that you have on the license. Sorry, I'm just going to get it in front of me. Um, I think it's. Yeah, condition 11, restaurant conditions. Alcohol should not be supplied, uh, sold or supplied other than when table meals are available. Um, and that relates to the whole premises or? Yes, the whole premises, yes. Okay, fine, thank you. Okay. Um, any further questions, Councillor Archer? No, that's me done for the moment, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. Yeah. Councillor George, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, just just a couple. Um, is it more, more of a gen general thing, really? Is it? I think that it's from the comments we see from local residents. There's it, a slight concern that this is moving from very much a restaurant use to being predominantly bar use. So I just wonder if you could comment on that, on on how you're looking to run run the place. Yeah, so I have seen the representations and some of the Instagram photos, but I don't know if you've managed to actually have a look at our social media. That was that picture was only taken of private hires. So that was just a snapshot of the private hires. And um, most of our advertising on Facebook, there's gin nights, there's Sunday roasts, there's Monday two for ones. There's so many deals on food. We've also partnered up with the discount that the government had done of actually applied yesterday from Monday to Wednesday as well. So for £10, I think it's 50% off that people get. So with Instagram, yeah, the theme might follow the colours and it looks nice because we are a nice premium restaurant as well. So I wouldn't, I don't think I have a comment to say on how it's being run because it's being run as a restaurant and bar. We actually have more food than drinks. Like cocktails, we probably have 10 on our menu and food, we have so much food. Okay, thanks. Um, also, just the, the live music that you, yeah. current, that you currently have, where, where is that live music held? You know, where, where do you hold that at the moment? Downstairs. So it's downstairs. And you're, you're moving that so upstairs, is that right? No, so no, I haven't, I haven't changed anything with that. It's the same condition okay. as before. So, um, so it, will, it will remain in the basement? Yes, it? it will remain in the basement because upstairs is a restaurant. You're not really going to have um live music upstairs as well yeah okay thank you questions councillor george you that is that everything yeah okay thank you yeah i i'd, I'd like to also ask you uh, a, a just a few few questions to help me with with my understanding um let's see um relations with your general neighbors um, obviously, um, it, it's been brought to our attention that there are neighbours who have said that there is noise and there is disturbance as a result of your uh, your premises and and so forth. I mean, what's your what's your response to that? Really, do you have uh, noise management policies in place? Um, how do you mitigate the issues? Uh, we do actually have a noise management in place. We've actually got a noise limiter device as well. 
we've, we've also got the, I think it's called the decibel uh, meter as well. I've actually had the Kingston Council check that as well, and it is in line with the numbers that they've said. And there's also a noise management plan done that any, before any event that's being used downstairs. And we haven't had any complaints come in from Kingston Council with the noise as well. Okay. And I, I think just to, just to add to that, sorry, just to jump in, just to add to that, I, I, I think, you know, a, a lot of those comments really relate to, um, you know, time gone by um, before V and Z were involved in, in, in Niku Bar. So I, I think, you know, what uh, Katerina and family have demonstrated in the last 12 months is the fact that, you know, not only do they run this very responsibly, but actually they're very proactive in the measures that they take and the policies that they have in place. And I, and I think that's reflected in the fact that there have been no complaints from anybody um, since the last uh, um, license hearing. So and the, all they're doing today is they're asking for an extension of what already exists. OK, um, I have asked the officers. There have been um, th there's been two complaints, um, to be fair, um, uh, in, 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 in that 12 month period, one to do with noise outside late at night and the other one i think was was operating out of hours so there's one one complaint about noise have you had any complaints from residents have they come to you directly to complain about noise and have you taken a log or taken action with uh, with those complaints you are on, on mute by the way just in case katarina So is it working now? Yep, that's good. Okay, yeah. We did have we did have one complaint that was in November, um, and then we did address it. I, I spoke with Kelly as well. We did we did apologise for the noise complaint as well. Um, I think what it was there was I think there was um, I can't remember. I think it was a twenty fifth year old birthday party, and there was more. There was there was like between a hundred to one hundred and fifty people. But you've addressed it. Yeah, we addressed it. You've addressed it. it and you've dealt with it and it's not happened since. And it's not happened since again. Okay. Um, have you um, made some adjustments to the building in terms of um, improvements or not soundproofing or, or noise mitigation? Is that something you've done? Yes, we have. So we've, we've put a fire door downstairs and also put the partition on the wall so no noise can actually go up. And also the windows have been blocked off. Um fine okay and the fire door um is also sealed as well so no no noise can actually travel out okay um and with these um private hire events i mean obviously i understand in the the main part of the building you are running a kind of a food food led business yeah um going forward is is private hire presumably it's a downstairs room with with an open space um do you see that as as potentially causing problems in the future, um, or has it caused problems in the past? In terms, no, of it doesn't. No. Okay. So, so just to reiterate with that point, when guests do actually book in um, events, they get a minimum spend on food. So that means that we can tell what type of crowd they are, and we know how much they're spending on food and drink as well. And then we also know what guests are coming in. That's why we, we do risk assessment. Man, we do risk assessments before guests are coming in. We don't just hire the event out to anyone who just wants a haul. Most of the guests that we get are like 30 year old birthday parties, 50, 25 weddings, engagements, Christmas parties of companies. So they are responsible crowds. OK. Um, so um, we, we can move on to the next item on the agenda. I'll just check any further questions, councillors, to, to the applicant. No. OK, thank you. Um, so uh, at this point in the agenda, we would uh, turn to responsible authorities, the police, environmental health, um, if they had any concerns um, regarding this application. Um, there are no uh, representations from those bodies, um, so we can now um, turn to other persons um, who have um, put out uh, objections. We did receive six written objections. You can speak if you're one of those people. Um, so I now call on uh, Kelly Dixon to address the subcommittee. And again, um, no time limit, but 
you know, five minutes, I think, is is, is adequate. <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, so I'm hoping everyone can hear me okay. I apologise if there are children in the background. Uh, it's quite noisy here. Um, we are direct next door neighbours um, and we live at flat 186 Hill Road. Our property, all of our windows back onto the side of uh, Niku. And yes, we, we put in complaints for noise for the property last um, November. Um, and we've lived through when that area has been used and it has been used for smoking and it has been used for socialising and are very much aware of the noise and the disruption it causes. Our property, as you can see, I mean, um, I'm not sure which page on A36 on your notes I've got here is where we're at. Um, and further through, you can kind of like see where we are on A39. So we've got um, all of our side windows of our property, all of our rear windows, we're at the rear aspect. So our properties are very closely linked. Um, they're about three metres apart. So unfortunately where the noise occurs is it's like a fishbowl so any sounds that comes up it echoes around so for example last this past weekend was quite quiet the weekend before was not quiet what happens is is even on that slight um smoking side on the other side you can hear like there were girls screaming and yelling which is fine it's what you do when you're out and you've had a drink in the afternoon but it echoes around the area and our concern is with the area that's being proposed which is the size of a, a very large car park which I was a bit concerned to hear the representative calling it a pub garden, um, which is going to be used as a drinking and smoking area. None of us in my property smoke. Uh, I myself am six months pregnant. I don't want to be smoking. I'm breathing in other people's smoke and other people's um, noise going through the evening as well. And it would have such a detrimental effect on our living um, and we will find it extremely um, distressing to to live through such because we would have to close every single window in our building to escape it now i know that the property next door is is owned by the people who are the leaseholders of nuka downstairs and they are smokers themselves at 90 year old so i don't think they would complain about it but i know that we would we've also got a lot of children in our property i'm not sure whether it's relevant but it is in the middle of a conservation area um, and I put this in my, my application here in that I think that it would be irresponsible for the council to allow such a development of such a large amount of noise and smoke pollution into a protective conservation area. Um, and as I say, the, the general, um, the I fully understand, and I put this in my in my letter that I fully understand with the government's changes, and it's a, a local company, and I and I totally support them using the smoking area on the other side, but to have such a large area that this covers, um, you could easily fit I don't know about a hundred covers, whatever it's going to be. That's just off the top of my head, and to have that much noise and the the actual smoking and everything else would just be unbearable for us. We would not be able to, to live there very easily at all. Um, addressing my big concerns about the bar being turned into, well, the restaurant, sorry, being turned into a bar, a bit of a fraudulent slip there. I mean, the pictures I picked from Instagram were just literally the front page when I was there. Obviously, they change over time. People who go in there, yes, they're young, they drink all of the above, and, and we all like a drink, don't get me wrong. But this is a restaurant and it needs to be addressed as such. And if it is turning into a bar, then that is something we are very much concerned about with people who we've had over time going and, and drinking out there. The alleyway between our two properties, which on your um, sheets seems to, I did do some pictures, but it seems to have been blacked out. Um, it's a very narrow alleyway. So patrons are sort of looking like they're being allowed to get in and out of that. But our properties, you can see there, it's literally underneath our windows. So everything that comes from there, whether it's noise, whether it's smoke, whether it is anything, will directly affect our living as well. So we are extremely concerned. And I fully understand with Boris Johnson's initiative, and I understand the whole COVID-19 situation, but if you make it a statute that this is being permitted within the license change, then it's there forever. I'm suggesting use the outside smoking area as a drinking and smoking area and the front pavement as suggested in the, the government's legislation. But if we make such a large area out the back, which is unheard of in our 
in our community area at the moment that that would have such an effect on our lifestyle and irreversible at that point. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Archer, or do you have any questions for? Yeah, uh, thank you. So yeah, thank, thank you so much um, for that. Really helpful. Um, I guess the I guess what the applicant was saying a moment ago is it's um, a restaurant and tables with, um, you know, a waiter and waitress service and people will be eating their meals and, and then it'll be closed at nine o'clock. Um, does that reassure you at all that it, it, the noise you'd be hearing would be sort of families and friends chatting, having a meal? Um, and no, then, not no, really. No, I, I don't okay. want to be difficult. Honestly, I don't. Okay. And my parents own their own company and I, I understand the times at the moment are hard. The problem is at the moment where the buildings and the geography is, it is a fishbowl and all of the sound echoes around. So even on the side slither where you can have 10 people on the other side of the building, we hear that continuously. We also have um, where people are at the back of the building, that comes straight up to us as well. And if we're talking about a large group of people outside, then I think that that would be unbearable. I have friends that go there, they've been to parties and things, and yes, there's food available, but it is very clear that it's a cocktail bar that, that they're going to, and uh, to have that outside would just, just not be acceptable for us at all. Mm. Um, just, just as a thought, do you think if they put up gazebos, I know this isn't your role to decide what they do, yeah. um, or have any, but as in just as a thought, if, if there were gazebos up and things like that, like, would that help with the noise or do you think? I it's highly just... doubt it. I, I don't know if you visited the site. We're talking about a large car park. It's very large. Yeah. So the amount of people that would be in there and setting that precedence when COVID is finished to fill that space in what I've, I've just heard being called a pub garden. Um, that really concerns me. Um, and as I say, if you, I don't, the picture of my flat, the grounds of it, uh, the layout has been taken from my application. And yeah. literally all of our windows down the side and down the back, our whole flat will just be full of smoke. And when it was open previously, and I know we can't hark back to what was before, the side area was used occasionally. There were so many complaints that had to go into the council. And it was a just continuously that we have got smoke inhalation that we have got noise disruption um, mm -hmm. and it was not acceptable, which is why these were put in place for this current license. We've been there 15 years, so we've been through this a few times before. But if it was to go back to that way, it, it would just be unacceptable. Okay. okay, thank you so much for your thank answers. You. Thank you. Councillor George, do you have any questions? Um, for so just a, a quick one, which sort mm -hmm. of follows up from what's been asked before, is, is that... Um, I can understand your concerns um, and you're talking about the echoing, which um, I, I've suffered with, with a previous place. I, I know sometimes yeah. things echo and, and get out of control. It, do you think there's any sort of uh, precautions that, that, that could be put in to ameliorate that in some way? So, um, you know, I, I know it's difficult to soundproof outside areas. Um, but We try our best at school, for example. I've got 100 children <laughs> on the playground at the moment and with all the best will in the world, literally our window, our buildings are three meters apart. So you're mm. talking all of that smoke and sound straight into my whole building. I can't yeah. see any way of mitigating that for such a large space that could fit so many covers. And I don't mean to be difficult with that statement either. Yeah, I mean, we have other instances before where there's been sort of planting of hedges and perhaps even some glass panels, mm. um, things like that. But you. You, you, you don't think that would uh, help There were much. already hedges around because it's a conservation area, which yeah. is the point I've made. So there were already trees around. And I've seen down there because they were told previously they'd be allowed to do so when they first applied, which unfortunately was misleading for the applicants. But there's some bamboo have been put up and things like that. But even if there was a um, an enclosed area, you're still going to have all of that number of patients with cigarette smoke. There will still be the noise smoke and noise um, and... It, it is incredibly loud and this is from a very sort of boring domestic point of view if you're sat watching tv or having a relaxing conversation with and how it's been before we've had to shout and close our windows in summer because yeah. it's we cannot hear past it at all we've been here before thank you okay, thank you um 
So, so um, Ms. Dixon, you, you say you've lived in the um, the building for 15 years, yes? Correct, yes. Um, and, you know, what, what, what we have to consider is, is uh, we have to consider each application on its own merits. Absolutely. So, therefore, um, I, I understand there's been many versions or different proprietors at that premises yes. uh, over over the, the years. Absolutely. And, I, and I do take everything in its, its own consideration from us since they've been trading since last September, I think it was, after all of the hearings, August, September. We had a noise complaint which was incredibly loud um, and it went on late and we did phone through. I didn't take it through the council because um, I thought it would be best, to be honest, I've made noise complaints before from other neighbours just from downstairs. Um, and it's just easier to work it out between ourselves. Um, and and also it's the noise which is coming from the beer garden on the other side, the, the eating of it on the other side, we can hear it when it's open and when the people are out there. So yes, I, I, that's why I said retrospectively those few comments there that we've been before, but I am also making the point that at the moment we have made a sound complaint. We do have um, noise that comes across. <laughs> And if we're opening up a, a, an area that's about four times larger than the current area, then all of that disruption and pollution will be four times greater also. And also, at the moment, they are the smoking area is on the other side of the property. We're talking within three metres of our windows, which is very, very different. OK, thank you. Um, also, then, um, I'm a little bit unclear and maybe the applicant can sum up sum this up when they are um speaking in terms of the, the the planning um application and their intentions um would you say i mean the is the area currently being used for eating and dining or is it a place that people are, are drinking and smoking and are there it's is it a pub garden or is it a, is it a it's restaurant outside so the back bit which is being spoken about at the moment is when the application was first put forward I believe that there was an agreement with the leaseholders who live upstairs that it was going to be a it was a shisha bar or something else to begin with that then transpired that that wasn't going to be possible with the current license so it's been left by itself the side area is the area which is being used for smoking garden which is currently used for outside but as I say I'm sure the the license applicants can be able to explain that more fully but the area that we're currently considering isn't actually being used at the moment it's okay. just a side area that is and this is very much closer to where you your, your side of the the, the yeah so the area is on the other side of the property at 90 your roads so we have a whole and it's a very large property it's on the other side of the building the bit we're currently discussing um in this forum is uh, three meters from our property Okay, thank you. I have no further questions for you. Thank you. Um, did anyone else before we we move on to our next um, representative? No. So I now uh, invite. Hello. Did someone want to speak? Oh, you're right. Put me on. Yeah, can we, um, can we, we make a comment? Or do we respond uh, again? We, it, we just follow up the procedure. You, you okay. will get a chance to sum up after this next person, and then, then you can, you've can you got a chance to sum up, okay? Right. Thank you. But, so you can make those comments then. Thank you. Um, right, so I now call on Halter Dida, please, to um, represent, uh, make a representation, please. Yes, hello again. Um, I just want to um, present myself. I'm, I'm a postgraduate student in Kingston University for landscape and urbanism. And actually, uh, I'm going to describe, like, let's say, a totally different situation from um, Miss Kelly. Um, I live just a, a building apart from the restaurant, and uh, I have no concern about noises. I have never heard about them. So um, actually, I was pleased. Um, and I'm pleased for the restaurant to continue serving the delicious food. And I really enjoy the um, interior design and also the exterior design of the um, restaurant. So um, I'm, let's say, totally pro for the restaurant to continue the, um, all these uh, many activities that it has. Um, so, yeah, this is. 
Okay, thank you. Do you have anything else to to add? Um, no, it's just that. So I really enjoy, uh, especially when for, for the events or birthdays or anniversaries, um, it's really nice place. So um, I think it's one of the um, least less, uh, nice places that are in this uh, in Ural Road. So I so, really like. Yeah. So you're a reg you're a customer of of Niku, are you? Yes, let's say yeah, recently. Okay. Um, fine. So um, I, I will ask Councillor Archer. Do you have any questions? Yes, please. Um, thanks, Halter. So when you go um, to NICU, do you tend to go for drinks, um, dancing? What kind of thing? What what reasons do you attend? Uh, well, mostly for yeah, to to drink something or even try the foods, delicious food. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, so you would sometimes just go there just for a drink. Drinks, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, how far away is your property from the restaurant bar? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, so I'm at that 58 Wheel Road, so it's like a building apart. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, in terms of noise and things like that, have you ever experienced that kind of noisiness kind of at, at the kind of closing time out on the street or in the back? Probably it's because of this distance, but it's just one building apart. So I, I have never heard about any noise at all. OK. OK. OK, great. Yeah, that's that's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor George, do you have any questions? For... Nothing for me, thanks. OK. Um... And I, I have no no questions for you. Thank you for, for coming. Um, um, you. We now, um, would the applicant, um, I'll invite you now to make a, a closing statement. But first, um, Councillor Archer, I know there was a question I missed you earlier that you wanted to ask, and perhaps you can cover this when you, you sum up as well. Do you want to just sort of pose your question? Yeah, so in terms of the garden area that you're hoping to, well, the, the car park that you're hoping to make into a garden and open up for um, tables to sort of, uh, yeah, for table service for, for food. Um, what's the current planning um, permissions on that? Can you tell me in your sum up? Yeah. Okay. If you like, you can answer that first, then you can sum up. It's entirely up to you, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll do all of that in our sum up if that's okay. So that's now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Great. But, Thank you. So, in 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 terms of um, planning, um, there's currently been no application for that, um, and I think with the guidelines that are coming in from um, government and council, is it? I, I guess it's possibly questionable whether any planning will um, will be needed for for what is intended. Um, but but obviously, if there is, then that will be subject to planning. So yeah, that, sorry, that you would fun. have to make an. You would have to either have a, a pavement license, or you would have to have planning permission. Uh, I would suspect that it would be more likely that you'd have to have planning permission because the pavement license probably doesn't necessarily apply that far. But yeah. uh, you know, you'd still have to, if 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 a pavement license did apply, then you'd have to apply for it as well. Yeah. So so I think I think the the the, the current thinking is because it's all about to change. Is that um, we're kind of in that in, in, in that um, interregnum period, and so it would be worthwhile waiting um, before you to see how that plays out and, and and actually what government and local council will, will need um, will will request you to either to do or to or, or to apply for. Um, so I think today we're just focused on the license side of things. Um, and I, I think just there's a, there's a th few things just to reiterate. I think firstly, um, there's been quite a lot of confusion in um, the um, the five um, representations against. Uh, there is no current change to what Niku um, have been doing over the last uh, nine, ten months since the last hearing. Um, they, they intend to run it in exactly the same way, um, with the same um, protocols and um, 
the same management structures they've got in. So there's, it's, it's, there's not a push to make it into a cocktail bar. There's not a push to make it into a pub. There's not a push to make it into something that it currently isn't. Um, I think there is, and there has been since the last hearing, um, a great desire to work with uh, neighbours and the community so that if there is ever an issue, it's it's done um, in a collaborative way rather than it is done in a, um, in a um, um, confrontational way. So if something needs changing, it needs changing. They'll change it. So um, they're very keen to mitigate any aspects of or any effect of what they do as a business. And I think um, the fact that you've actually had one person um, who has written in to say that they think it's a good idea, even if they live two to three buildings away. I don't think I, I've applied for many licenses over the years. I don't think I've ever had that happen to me. Um, so I think what it shows is, is that they're a, they're a good addition to the neighborhood, not a bad addition to the neighborhood. And then what they're trying to do is to grow their business in a very positive way, not in a very negative way. And they're trying to do it with the understanding of the local community, the local neighbors. And I think they're trying to take people with them, not to fight them. And that definitely has been an aspect of the way that they've gone about this application and the prior application and how they've operated in the last nine months. They have had sound engineers in, they've had all that checked. Um, but I think to address some of the um, issues that, you know, Kelly quite rightly has, is that I think what she's imagining um, or what she's, she's, she fears is um, a garden that is used for smoking and drinking for loud people um, for it to get out of hand, for it to impact very badly on on her um, her use of of, of, of her um, her flat in the manner that she would expect, um, and I, I think if I, I don't know if anybody knows Claygate particularly, um, but I, I live in Claygate. I live up the road from the Swan Pub, and um, up until about three or four years ago, the garden in the Swan Pub was not used particularly well. It wasn't, it was pretty down market. Um, it was pretty drab. And in the last two to three years, the owners of the Swan, um, and, and they have houses right next door. They have houses opposite. They have houses around the corner. They have spent some money on making it into a really fantastic space for all their customers, no matter whether they are there for a glass of wine, they're there for a beer, they're there for food, they've put um, a barbecue outside, they've got a bar outside, they've got all these things that Nikio aren't even going anywhere close to applying for, um, and yet it's become a really fantastic addition to Claygate Stroke Isha. It hasn't been detrimental in any shape or form, and I'm not aware of any, um, any issues that have flowed from that. So, so whilst Kelly is thinking that this is going to be a really negative thing, if you look at the Swan and the way that they've done it, they've made it a very positive thing. So it can, it is possible to make it a, a, a you know, a garden space like Niku have. It is, make, it is possible to make it into something that's very positive for, for everybody involved. And I think that is definitely their, their, their intention. Um, if there are things that need, needed to be done to mitigate, whether it's greenery, um, at the moment, it's 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 tarmac in the middle. There's a um, um, a couple of walls which um, are fairly bare, and so noise will bounce. And there are there are things you can do with greenery to mitigate noise. Um, in terms of smoking, I, I think it's a family space nationally, uh, and I would imagine in Surrey, percentage of smokers is probably relatively low, or historically certainly it's very low. So I don't think you're going to get hundreds of people smoking outside. And, I, and I, it, you know, it's almost like um, Kelly is imagining that maybe there's going to be, um, you know, enough smokers almost to, 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 to imitate a large fire. And I, I don't I just don't see that it's going to be like that at all. And I, and I think if it, if it is, if that's what happens for any bizarre reason, I think the owners of NICU um, are very aware of the effect that they will have. And I think they're very, very keen to work with everybody in the local area, especially neighbours, because they, they want to run a very successful business. And that only comes with working with everybody involved. So I think it's a very positive thing what they're doing. I don't think it's, it's a negative. Okay. Um, 
anything further to add before um, we yes i have a few points just to add further um just in line with the alleyway that is not actually yeah. used by anyone at all that is a drive in and drive out um, for, for you yeah for us we don't let anyone park there as well there's only one door that customers can come in and out of That's the main door. even though with the covid situation we've even put a one-way system with that in and out door because we know we're not allowed to use that door the back door is only used where the bins are which um we have a condition on our license what times we can use that door to take out the bins as well so just to reiterate that is not being used by anyone if there is anyone down there, we always come out and say, please, can you leave uh, as well? And we've also got CCTV in the area as well. So that's just to reiterate that point. And also with outside, because it is also table service, you're not going to have people standing around. You're not going to have people standing around with drinks, just standing around smoking as well. It's all table service. And then okay. just a few final points as well with the planning as well. Um, planning was out, as you, I think there was in there was an email attached with it, planning was out. Um, it was later discovered that there was no planning actually needed for one of the applications I've gone through, so that was fine. Um, that's why when I spoke to the licensing officer, they said, have you spoken with planning? I said, yes, and then it was just left as that. Um, and then a few final points as well with the outside um, smoking as well. I've already mentioned that we are a family um, run restaurant most of the events we have are two for one on food. We've got um, ladies night as well. We've got Sunday roast we do. So like I said, you're not gonna have people just coming in to eat a full meal and just smoke as well. Okay, thank you. Um, so this now concludes the public hearing um, for the subcommittee. So, so the subcommittee members, the legal officer and the clerk are going to withdraw to a private meeting area while the subcommittee makes its decision. So we're going to talk and, 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 and evaluate everything that we've heard, heard this morning. Um, and we will confirm our decision to all parties by email and, and a full decision letter with reasons will be sent to all parties within five working days. Um, so um, thank you everybody for your um, contributions this morning. Um, I'm now going to close this meeting. And if, I, uh, sorry to interrupt you there, can I just say one more thing? So with the current um, hours that we have, there was actually an error made on the application that I did actually address with the licensing officer as well. So the recorded music is actually staying the same, but it has been switched around for Sunday and Friday. So that needs to stay the same as it was before. OK, we will note that. Um, when, Perfect. When we'll Sorry do... to interrupt you there because I thought you were just going to. Okay. Sorry, I think um, I think. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite my case, it's my colleagues, but I think it will have to be as whatever the application is. We can't switch it now. It will be the hours as per your application. Yeah, I sort of concur with that. So, sorry, you're talking about the music till midnight 30? Yes, that, that was the thing I asked to change around, because what happened was when I submitted the application, I don't know if you know the Adobe, it wasn't working, so I had to submit. I had to print it and scan it, print it and scan it. It went through four different five drafts with Marcella. Okay, but the, the, the application for a, a live music is till 11 p.m., yeah? Yeah, that's the, that's that's fine. It's just the recorded So is that music. what you want in terms of recorded music on no, Sundays? We, um, no. what, what, what they want is what, what already exists. There was just an error on the application, so they're not asking to change that. Okay, so... Whereas the application yeah. suggests that they are. Okay, well, the unfortunate part of this is that whatever's on the application is what the committee considers. Um, normally, where you have this sort of situation occur, you can go down, but you can't go up, I'm right. afraid. It's just the way the, 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 the law is. You, you, the whole point is that uh, people who see the application in terms of the blue notice, the A3, uh, A4 notice, or, in, or on the website or in the, in the local newspaper, have That's to know what's being applied for okay. so uh you can't go up above that um it's the way the legislation works or the regulations work mute, mute. okay well we're going to as i say that's the guidance from from the officers so it's not gonna we, we will deliberate on on what's presented to us um and a notice will be sent to to all parties within five working days so Thank you all, um, and if everyone who is um, needs to come to the the, uh, the next part of the meeting can join me on the, the link that Councillor Newton has sent us all. So thank you, Elle. I'll close this meeting now. Thank you. Thank you very much.